Good morning. So glad, so glad you guys are here. I just, I was, I was talking with a gang out back, and um, what an honor it is to have Bill Johnson be my intro. We should do that more often. It feels really, really good, you know? Like, wow. I, um, I get the privilege today, and this is what's so amazing, I get the privilege today to teach you and me about what we just experienced. You see, I think that's actually the normal way that God does things. If you remember in the book of Acts, this amazing thing happened where the Holy Spirit came to a people that had not yet experienced the Holy Spirit. And then Peter got to stand up and talk about what just happened. It is the, that's the best thing. Oh, this is what the prophets were talking about so long ago. We just got to experience it. Can I just say something? I'm so glad that we all, y'all, y'all, we all get to live in this time in history, because there's been so much that's been talked about, about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit, that you and I have been entrusted with actually carrying and stewarding such a great opportunity that the world has never seen, the revival that's about to take place. And see, see, you know, we're building the building out there, and I want to say thank you, because you guys have just so responded the last two months. Really, you've responded the last two years, and I want to say thank you for that, but I want to tell you something. The years of our investment now will affect generations to come, because here's the deal. Don't you all agree that we want everyone to encounter such a great love? We want everyone to encounter his presence. We want everybody to have an opportunity to say, I have a home. I have a place. I'm a part of a family, and that's why we're, we're making room so that people could actually encounter and enjoy that which we just had a taste of this morning. See, this is the place that we learn. This is the place where we learn from each other. We watch how we grow, how we respond when his presence shows up tangibly. Do you know that it says this, where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. It's not, listen, this is what it means. He actually, his presence is manifested when you and I come together in agreement. That's just two or three. What happens when 200 people come together in agreement? You know, when, when there was 120 in one place that were in agreement and in unity, and the Holy Spirit came. The only thing that's stopping anything from coming of heaven is a lack of unity. And I'm going to do everything I can with every breath I have to make sure that as much as it is with me, that we are at peace with each other and with God. And when disunity leaves the room, unity comes in and Holy Spirit's not far behind. Okay, I'm done. See you guys. Have a great day. So we're going to get, if you enjoy today at all tonight, um, we're going for it deeper, harder, longer. The, the whole night, this thing that we're learning today, we're going to do it on a, an amplified version tonight of worship. And I you know, have a personal invitation for you to come because I'm going to play guitar tonight. Please don't let that keep you away. You just come and laugh at me. Nice. <laughs> It'll be fun. Really going to enjoy it. But we're doing this whole series for the next six weeks is on this book called Hosting the Presence. And it really, I love, I love, uh, I love what, what Bill and what Bethel has been willing to pay amazing prices for so that we get to enjoy a revelation that they were willing to pioneer. And see, not many people are willing to pay the price of a revelation that will actually change history. Not many people are willing to lay down their lives to go into the sufferings of Christ, to take on the accusations that Jesus would have taken on, to, to have all the doubters and naysayers all around you, yet you say, no, 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 but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to return that towards you. I'm going to stay in a place that is appropriate representation of my Father's heart. And none of us do it perfectly, but all of us are moving towards it together because that is the heart's desire, that we'd be a church that is full of honor, full of respect, that we are a family, that we do care about each other. And I'm going 
going to tell you something. Nothing is worth fighting for more than family. Why? Because the whole world is looking to belong to something. They, they all want to, they want to step out. They want to be a part of something that's greater than themselves. And we need to be willing to fight for something that's greater than our own opinions, our own perspectives, our own lack, our own disappointments, our own offenses, and our own hurts. Thank you all for the last series because joy is the thing we've got to move toward because everything of heaven will be encased in this thing that we have in front of us that says all the trouble, all the trials, all the tribulation, all the doubt, all the fears. I've got this thing in front of me that I'm going for and I'm not going to stop till joy is full and full of glory and that it overflows out of my life. Why? Because I want this thing called his presence to actually be available to everyone I come in contact with. Let me tell you what his presence is it. It's not attitude, it's not opinion, it's not judgment, it's not accusation, and it's not pointing fingers. It's not shame, and it's not guilt. It's not. It's not towards you, and it's not from you. What is, what is a proper overflow is that when you walk into the room, peace, joy, a right posture. And here's the deal, I don't have to be right All I want to do is I want to make sure that my relationship with you and my relationship with me and my relationship with you is on point. Why? Because the Bible says that everything, everything hangs on that. And I know this. I know this. If I love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, loving me will be a little bit easier and loving others will be way easier. Why? Because you can't ever give what you don't have. And I want everyone This is my honest heart. I want everyone, why do we exist? I want everyone to experience the love of God. Because I know this, that that judgment judgment will fail, mercies will fail, the law will fail, all those other things will fail. Prophecies aren't going to last any longer. We won't need words of knowledge anymore. But this is the one thing I know that won't fail. Love will never fail. Love is the thing that will sustain you. Love is the thing that will keep you going. Love is the thing that will wake you up in the morning. Love is the thing that will allow you to go to bed at night. Love is the thing that will keep you motivated unto the task. It's the actual the thing that when love is sitting there and it's pre, 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 pre preeminent, When love is preeminent, then what happens to Scott is Scott gets hopeful. When I feel love, you want to make somebody hopeful, love them well. You want to to be kind, be kind to them, be nice to them. I only love his presence because he's always kind. I love his presence because he's always there. I love his presence because no matter what I'm doing, no matter how unfaithful I am, he is still faithful. I love his presence. This thing of his presence is the preeminent. It's the most important thing. Why? Because when I love well, I get hope. And when I get hopeful, watch out because I'm going to move mountains. Because faith has to follow it. Faith has to follow it. So if you're lacking faith, you're not really lacking faith. You're lacking hope. And if you're lacking hope, you're really not lacking hope. You just need to experience the love of God more. All right. So, hey, this is why we embrace his presence. So that you actually get empowered, because you're never going to get empowered if you don't experience his presence. And the reason we want you to be empowered is because we want you to make a difference in your life, in history, and in your world. And you can't impact culture if you first haven't been impacted, and you can't get impacted unless you first encounter and embrace the love, the presence of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. So why is this presence our first priority? Because it is our ultimate assignment. There's not, listen, nothing else matters if he's not there. Can I just tell you something? My definition of hell is this. My definition of hell is this, that I can't ever taste taste him, I can't ever feel him, that I can't ever see him, that he'll never be available to me again, that he can't hear me and I can't hear him, that he actually, that is what the definition of hell is. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that never again will you have the opportunity? Can you imagine that never again you'll never be able to experience what we just experienced today? That, that there wouldn't be any hope. That hope would be vacuumed out of your life. That, that joy would be vacuumed out of your life. That peace would be vacuumed out of your life. That there's no sense of him and he is not available at all. This is why he died. And this is why he lays down and he says, over my dead body are you going to go to hell. I am stopping this with everything that I have. I'm going to give you everything so you don't have to experience ever again a place where I am absent from you. I'm spitting on you. I'm sorry. See, if you're not close in proximity, you can't get spit on. (laughs) 
I love this guy by the name of Peter. Peter, uh, Peter is a knucklehead like me. Um, this gives me great hope. Peter gives me great hope. Peter's the kind of guy that says, ready, fire, aim. I mean, that's, this is what Peter does. Peter is like, Peter's like there, never, Lord, whack. Don't cut the guy's ear off, Peter. Jesus picks it up, puts it back on him. Peter goes, bid me to come, Lord. Jump. What did I just do? And he jumps out of a boat into a, into a place that no one else was willing to go. And then, and, then, and then Jesus looks at him and says, Peter, I'm going to build my church on guys like you. You know why? Can I just tell you all something? It's way easier to slow down a horse that wants to run than it is to get a donkey moving. I don't know, I, you, know why, you know why donkeys don't move? Because they're stubborn. Here's another reason. Because a donkey's afraid to move because they're always they're afraid of being right or wrong. I don't want to go this way. I don't want to go that way. What if I'm wrong? You ever see Eeyore? I remember Eeyore. Wasn't he a donkey? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just uh, don't think I can get going today. Peter's like, let's go. Ah! He's like, you, Doug. You and me. Right. But what is cool, what's cool, really good, is that when you're running really hard, it's easier to say, come on, slow down, buddy. A donkey never has to give up because they never get going. Does that make sense? So it's on this kind of personality that he built. And so now, now Peter's been a knucklehead all this time until something amazing happens where he experiences this overwhelming presence of God. Now let me just tell you something. When you got born again, now if, you're not, if you've never given your life to Jesus by inviting him into your life, what happens is Holy Spirit, his presence comes and lives within inside of you. Right in that moment, he comes to live within inside of you. That presence will always be there. Now I want to tell you something. The Holy Spirit or his presence living inside of you is for you. But then there's these moments, it's called the anointing. And when the anointing comes on you, when his manifest presence shows up and it comes upon you, when the anointing comes upon you, when his manifest presence is upon you, it's not for you, it's for them. So you have to, you carry something. Listen, you already have him inside of you, but there is this thing we have to learn. I want to carry his presence wherever I go so that what I'm carrying of him is not a bad attitude. What I'm carrying is him that I can actually release. I can operate under the influence of the Holy Spirit, not just from the inside doing something for me, but I, I carry his presence so I can release his presence to actually change atmospheres that I walk in. In fact, we can get to a place, I'm yelling right now, can you believe it? We could get to a place when we walk into a room, people can be healed just because we walked into the room. You, you can, all of a sudden, I don't know why I just changed my mind, but I was going to do this, but because of something just happened when you walked into the room, now I'm going to do that. You can change atmospheres by what you carry, and you can either be under the influence of the wrong spirit, or you can be under influence of the Holy Spirit. And he has invited his church to carry his glory, because what if, what if the whole world could be changed just by releasing his goodness? And he promised this that his glory is going to cover the whole earth. And he's entrusted his goodness to his church. But the church has forgotten how to be kind and how to be good. We've, we really know how to be mean. We, we really know how to be judgmental. But let me tell you something, that's changing. And what changes is when his presence is invited and desired to come, then his presence first changes us internally so everything external is affected. It comes out out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. Wow. Woo! Pastor Scott, that is seriously good. In fact, it's the facts we want about our lives, isn't it? In fact, when people knew that Peter was going to walk by, they carried the sick out to the streets, and they laid them down on cots and mats, knowing the incredible power emanating from him would actually overshadow them and heal them. He didn't pray for them. He walked by. How, do, how would you like just, oh, you're just, I want to hang out with Scott because every time he walks by, something gets better in me. There's people like that, you know, in your lives. 
You know, then there's people in your lives, every time you walk by me, you're like, can I walk by you as quickly as I can? Right? It's like, but what do we want to be? Who do we want to be? What do we want to represent? Who do we want to be in our day, in our moments, in our years? What do we want to be known for? Peter made a decision. And all of a sudden, people knew that anytime Peter's around, something good's going to happen. Watch this. The presence of God upon you actually is the anointing of a person. It's not an it. Some people say it's, uh, it's juice. Oh, it's that wow factor. Uh, it's that aura. Uh, it's that energy. You're putting off good energy. Can I just tell you something? That's noise. None of that's that. Nothing, that's all noise. Now, I'm going to tell you something. What happens is Holy Spirit, the person, walking with you, everything around you changes. I agree with you, the energy's better. I agree with you, the atmosphere's better. But it's not the atmosphere, it's not nature, and it's not, it is a person. It's the third person of the Godhead that you've invited to walk with you in an intimate relationship, and then everything changes. It doesn't have to be fabricated. Whoo! So Jesus. How many like to have Jesus around when somebody's sick? Why? Because he didn't even have to pray for people to get sick, he just had to show up. Jesus, just show up. With and without prayer, people would get healed. Now he did. He said, be healed. Be free. You know? But he, you know why Jesus didn't have to go, oh, the name of Jesus, I'm you. You're slamming on people. You don't do that, none of that. I got a red mark right there because it kind of feels like it right there. You have to do any of that. He just had to be. Can I just tell you something? Jesus spent three to four hours a day preparing for the other 20. And the other 20 were very effective because he was willing to spend three or four father, three or four hours with his father to actually have a presence of his father that he could carry and release to people all day long. And he got worn out every single day. But he recharged by spending time in intimacy with the father. Greater the intimacy, greater the authority. Mark, it's about Jesus now. We talk about Peter. See if this sounds the same. Wherever he went, Jerry, wherever you go, Wherever you go, in the countryside, in the villages, in the towns, in the city of Elmira, they place the sick on mats in the streets because Jerry's coming to work. And when Jerry comes by in these public places, they're going to stop, Jerry, stop, saying, just let us touch your uniform, Jerry. Oh, we want to touch it. And all who touched Jerry's uniform got instantly healed. How would I like to live that way? Huh. Then we got Paul. Now I'm still working on having these ordinary miracles. Paul's doing these stupid extraordinary miracles. How many just likes to have some ordinary miracles going on? I just like, let me just get some of those ordinary miracles. It's a, you know, I only saw three of you raise your hands. Let's try this again. How many would like to see some, just some ordinary miracles going on in your life? Like, like see some marriages get healed, see some friends change their life. It gets, people come into salvation, people get healed, people get delivered. They're physically healed, they're emotionally healed, they're spiritually healed, relationally healed, financially healed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But, here we go. God kept releasing. See, see this? God will release, release things to people he can trust. Faithful in little things, you get entrusted with more. Take care of this one, you get two. Take care of two, you get four. Take care of four, you get 16. Do you see how it works? It multiplies them all. Keep God, God kept releasing a flow of extraordinary miracles through who? The hands of Paul. He wants to, you think Paul's any, Paul used to kill everyone. All us Christians, he was after us. But he had what? An encounter with Jesus. Everything changes with an encounter with Jesus. Every person in this community, we don't need, we're not gonna need jails anymore. We're, we're, well, we're pro I don't wanna give it to all our cops because my son's one, Jeremy's one. I don't wanna give it to cops. But I'm saying, what if? What if the hospitals, because we're walking through and we're carrying something, what, what if all of a sudden we don't, we don't have to worry about you know, welfare and Medicaid and all these things? Why? Because there's something. Now listen, I'm, I'm a practical guy. I'm a pra but I'm saying we need to start influencing, being influencers in society. And this is the way it starts to happen, through our hands. Yeah? Do you believe it can? We're believers, right? We're believers, right? We, we, gotta, we gotta start believing what we say we believe. 
And you know that you believe it if you're willing to learn and do it. Not just hear about it, not just watch others do it. I want to know how to do it. I want to come to church on Sunday to see how to worship God better so I can turn Sirius XM on during the week and listen to the message and worship God all week long that way too. It's not just about what you do here. It's about what you learn here and do there. That's why we exist. So it goes on. People respond to what they see resting upon you. Now they'll respond to what they see resting upon you, good or bad. When I have invited Holy Spirit to rest upon me, people like me. People are drawn to me. People are encouraged by me. When I have let some other spirit rest upon me, people can't wait to get away from me. Now listen, Peter, in one moment, I'll go over here. Peter, in one moment, Paul, Jesus said to him, Pete, or Paul, Peter, remember me? Peter, Paul, and Mary. Um, Jesus said to, said to Peter, Peter, you have said those things under the revelation of my father. You have heard my father. In the next moment, Peter, Satan, get behind me. I want to tell you something. The person that he was willing to build his church upon in one moment was hearing revelation from the father and in the next was doing the bidding of Satan. All of us, all of us have the ability to be under the influence of the wrong spirit at any time. We've got to understand that we've got to keep inviting, pursuing, focusing our attention on Holy Spirit. Father, is that your thought? Father, is that your word? Father, is that your attitude? I can always get back to Holy Spirit, and I don't have to yell at the other spirit. All I have to do is invite Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit automatically displaces anything else that is of darkness. And I don't have to listen to those other spirits. When I turn my focus, I don't have to rebuke things as long as I'm pursuing the right thing. Does that make sense? Ooh, cricket, 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 cricket. I'll, I'll, I'll scream enough for all y'all, all, all y'all, all y'all. Learning to host the presence of God is absolutely our biggest challenge, and it is the ultimate assignment of every believer. I love, love this, love this book. I, lo I love this book. I love his word. How many know that this is actually alive? It's breathing. It speaks to my soul two, three, four times a day. That's when I have it open, but it speaks to my soul two, three, four times a day because it's written on my heart. The reason it can be alive is because the written word can become a rhema word under the influence of the presence of Almighty God. The Holy Spirit can illuminate this, that the, page, the words of the pages jump out, and they actually make sense to me spiritually, not just academically. I can read this word and see a very cruel God in it, or I can read this word and see a very loving God in it. It all depends on who's influencing my hearing. It's true. I can rip you up and down, and I can torment you, and I can challenge you, and I can beat you, and I can cut you with words in this Bible under the wrong influence. Or I can take it, and I can ingest it, and I can relationally do what the Father would do and do the thing that never fails is I can love you in and through the word that God has given me, and I don't have to be right. Here's why. Because Holy Spirit is one who brings conviction. That's his assignment. My assignment is to love. To love till I'm not to convict you. I don't have the ability, and when I do, I'm in judgment in the wrong, under the wrong spirit. And why would I want to judge you when Jesus didn't come to judge us? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. But when, the, when, the, when you love well, you'll know you're loving well, because Holy Spirit will convict well. Because in the atmosphere of love, Holy Spirit does his best jobs. Why? Because he's not pushing himself on anyone. But when people start to feel loved, they start to say, I want what you have. Is that making sense? Love this. I have a lot of people tell me, yeah. I, I, I just, I have a lot of people quote or tell me the word, and, and, but I don't, I don't, I, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm just going to leave that alone. This, the beauty about Jesus is he is the perfect guest. Has anybody had an unperfect guest come into your home? Well, Thanksgiving's coming up. If you haven't, you will. <laughs> but Jesus is a perfect guest, and here's what he's inviting us to do. We need to view all 
I put this in really big letters in case you didn't notice. We need to view all of earth's priorities through his perspective. Earth does not look so overwhelming when you're seeing it through his perspective. The challenges, the changes, the lack, the things that are broken, they don't look so bad when you're looking through it through his eyes. Why? Because he always has had an answer before there was ever a problem. Always. There's no problem in your life that's bigger than him. Not one. Our greatest privilege is also our greatest responsibility. Listen, carrying his presence is a privilege. We get to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's residing in us. In case you didn't notice, there's some things we're not all that good at. There's some things that we think that's kind of inappropriate. There's some actions that we take may not be, but he says this, I'm gonna treat you as a finished work and I'm gonna clean you from the inside out. Don't worry about the out. Let the inside actually take care of that which is on the outside because it will eventually affect it. A clean cup on the inside eventually will be clean on the outside. It is true. So inside out is the way that he works. Church, stop worrying about the outside. Let's work on people's hearts. Stop worrying about their behaviors. Let's work on their identity. Let's let them remember who they are. When you're a good son, you act like a good son. When you're a good father, you act like a good father. When you're a good husband, you act like a good When you know who you are, your behaviors follow. Let's begin with what Jesus began with. Our assignment is to host him, but few have said yes. What would it look like if all of us, if every one of us said yes, I want you to come And I want you to live and breathe and be in me, on me, and work through me. What would your what would your what would your home look like? What would your relationships look like? How would your children be bettered by that? These are some of the questions because we must, here's the deal. If we're going to do this, he's got to become our center of our attention and the center of our focus. And he becomes the multiplier that actually makes everything in your life that is fruitful make it better. If you were a good husband, you'll be a better husband. If you are a good employer, you'll be a better employer. If you are a good man, you'll be a better man. If you are a good woman, you'll be a better. Everything gets better with the influence of Holy Spirit in and on your life. Do you believe that? Okay. That'd be, then that, that would probably be something worth pursuing, wouldn't it? I think so. I think so. So what happens to you when God actually rests upon you? And then what happens to them? When God actually rests upon you, everything is going to get better. Your life is going to get better. Your situation, but not only for you, it's going to get better for them. So what happens when people feel loved and appreciated and honored is they actually will start to listen to your voice of influence. Really good. So what is our responsibility in protecting that presence. What is it? Well, it's the same thing as any other relationship. How much do you want it? How much do we value it? See, because what's really important to you is what you spend your time on. What's really important to you is what you spend your money. Are you, are you, are you reading books? Are you listening to podcasts? Are you, are you getting into the word pursuing? What does it look like? If it's the number one priority according to scripture, is to, in, to encamp around his presence. All through scripture, you see it everywhere. And that his presence made a difference in every situation. When Jesus shows up, right, as, if it's that important to us, and if it's that important, shouldn't it be that important to us? And shouldn't we pursue it? I'm just asking the question. How are we going, what, if, if it's valuable, then also then, how are we going to be responsible to it, and then how are we going to protect it? See, because the reality is, if we really want to have an impact on the world, there's no ba- better way to do it than to do it with him. If you really want. Now, if, listen, maybe you, don't, maybe you don't really want to make an impact on the world. Well, how about making an impact on your home? Your neighborhood? At work? How many of us have left jobs because we didn't like them rather than changing the environment of our job? Ouch, I know. I hate that, Right? I mean, I'm that powerful? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all depends on what you're releasing. Oh. What about your marriage? Can I just tell you something? All those other marriages you see on Facebook? Not true. (laughs) You only see the best selfie. Have you ever seen anybody take a bad selfie? (laughs) 
You have seen a couple? Well, please don't take bad selfies or you're going to lose your friends. Because ain't nobody like a bad anything. At least with fake friends. Real friends, will, they'll still be with you. They will. Yeah, they, can, they can take your toxicity. Is that a word? Sometimes I have my own language, you know. In case you, you know. How is the nature of God revealed in and through us? Can I just say this? Your words will change your world. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I would like to say, change a heart so your words sound better, so your world gets better. Just thought, what is possible through us? What's possible through us as a result of him being honest? What's possible? Somebody tell me what's possible. Everything is possible. What's impossible for man is actually possible with God. Anybody got any, any impossibilities in their life? Let's just inject Jesus into it, shall we? What are, your, what are your thoughts? What should we do? What's your heart? And, uh, I know, but why do we want to do that? It's so much fun being miserable. What generation, this is the question, will actually be willing? And I'm hoping it's ours. They'll be willing to host him until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God, where we become the influencer everywhere rather than being influenced by everywhere. What if people actually invited us in and gave for the wisdom that we've gotten from heaven because we actually are carriers of his presence? Yes, that's all, that's what's so possible. What if we start getting asked, well, how can this person be healed? Well, I, I heard that marriages are actually getting restored at your church. I heard that things are, I actually, there's people being healed of cancer at your church. Well, what if that word got out? Would the world be a better place healed? I think so. I do. Hi, Amelia. How you doing? Can you move, can, can that guy that's sitting next to you move over a little bit? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Um, sorry, I throw it. We got much love for each other, so. Um, from garden to garden, from garden to garden. We lost it in the first garden. Jesus got it back in the second garden. We lost our authority in the first garden. Jesus got it back for us in the second garden. Can I just tell you something? He's returning us to our original intent, church. He's taking us back to our original intent where no longer, no longer will sin have dominion over us. No longer, right? Sickness, disease has to bend and submit to our rulership. Why? Because we're ruling with Jesus. Your marriage doesn't stand a chance of not being healthy. Come on. It's true. Genesis 1.28 says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. That's how we started. He made us in his image, why? So we could represent him in personality and function so that we could always rule as protective people and empowering people, and that with that place of rule was completely due to the overflow of intimacy that we had with him. Can I just tell you this? Do you want to get more voice of influence in your life with your kids, in your home, in your business? Your voice of influence will completely go up according to your level of intimacy that you have with him. It just will. You... <laughs> Do you, do you want to pray more effectual prayers? Then your intimacy grows deeper with him. You will have more effectual prayers. You, you, you actually, you want to be effective at your work? You let your intimacy go up with God. Whatever your goals are in life, they all get better as your intimacy, your relationship, as you build your life around his very essence and his very presence. It's just true. So there's this agenda that's not hidden, by the way. And he wants this. This is what he wants in your home. This is what he wants in your life. This is what he wants in your work. This is what he wants for us to represent to the world because it's so much of heaven and it's this. He wants a peace, which is the very substance, the very atmosphere of heaven. When you walk into a room, things should not elevate in anger. When you walk into the room, things should become more calm. This thing that he wants to drink, because I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when you can walk into, this is the deal. You'll know that you're walking in his presence when you can sleep in any storm that comes to your life. 
I'm at peace. He's got me, man. He's got me. He's faithful. He's for me. Out of that, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that peace will become your greatest weapon of warfare. It actually is called a mili- it's actually like a military function in Scripture. When, when things come against you, God raises up a standard against it, and that standard is peace. Peace, always spoken into a storm, has to, the storm has to yield to heaven. It has to yield to heaven. It has to. Earth has to yield to heaven. So if we're carriers of his presence, one of the first things we'll notice is that peace goes before us, it's beside us, and it follows us wherever, wherever we go. The other thing is, I cleaned one-third of my garage. I feel so much more order in my life. I can find things. Can I just tell you something? If your life is a little chaotic, release order into it. Heaven is a heaven. God is a God of order. He sets things into motions. And in case you didn't notice, the sun's still coming up. Even though it's an hour different, the sun is still coming up every single day. He has placed things into order, and it's timely. You can set your life by it. You can set your calendar by it. He's dependable. There's something that he does. He speaks things into order. Get your family back in order. Get your marriage back in order. Get your business back in order. Get your life back in order. Order is what heaven looks like. Chaos is what hell looks like. You'll know you're carrying his presence when things begin to come into order. Individually and corporately. And glory. He wants to begin to release his goodness Glory, goodness, same interchangeable word. And it will come against everything that is inferior, everything that is lacking, and everything that is hollow. If you're experiencing any of those in your life, let his goodness, let his glory wash over you, flow into you, and flow through you where all of those things that were less than have to stand down to his glory. It's true. It's true. So here's our... I can just watch this. Ah. Our immediate responsibility, please tend to your garden. Tend to your home. Tend to your business. Tend to your children. Tend to your church. When we start doing that and we've got that sound, then Our ultimate responsibility is to go out and change the whole world. But you don't change the world by something that's in disorder. You don't change the world by something that's not being dealt with responsibly. You don't change. Listen, he said this, be fruitful and multiply. But you don't want to multiply what's not fruitful. So he will be willing to slow things up a bit so you get the fruitful part down so that before you multiply something that's unfruitful, he says, wait, 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 wait. I don't want the whole world in disorder. I don't want the whole world in chaos. I don't want the whole world that's not at peace. I want to actually release heaven to earth, not more of earth. So he says, this is what you do. This is your immediate responsibility. So let's start right there. Father, would you begin to help us in our garden? take care of it, our garden, to take care of it, our family garden, to take, let's do that, and then let's allow us to go forth and multiply that which is actually fruitful, because spiritual warfare is exactly this, if I can maintain divine order through relationship with God, if I can then spread it by representing him appropriately, and I can live responsible and be productive, when I can reproduce and expand the borders, then I can let this all happen and this can all flow from this place that I've learned in relationship that I can have intimacy coming from God that actually will affect my world, my immediate world and my exterior world. Why is this so important? Why is this presence so important? Because Satan actually has no authority in any of our lives when there is no agreement with him. The only way he steals our authority is when we come into agreement with him. So he can lie to you. He can tell you you're no good. He can tell you your family's not worth it. He can tell you you're never gonna be a success. He can tell you you're never gonna amount to anything. And if you agree with any of that, it will become your truth. And then when it becomes your truth, he has just stolen your authority and he's using your authority against you. 
Let's not do that. Let's come into agreement with not the facts about people. Let's come into the agreement with what God has spoken about people. Let's start agreeing with truth rather than facts. Your fact is you might be out of money. The truth is he has a lot of money for you. You might be out of energy. The truth is he has everything that you need. Anything he invites you into, he has a provision for it and an answer to it. Let's start moving to that place where our authority is increased by agreeing with him rather than being decreased by agreeing with the enemy of our soul. That's my point. Because here's the deal. All of your actions are either going to come from fear or come from love. And you get to choose every single day. Are you making decisions because of what fear mongers have said? Naysayers have said? Doubters? The ones who always point out lack of faith? They tell you what's not there? Whoop! Father, what are you saying about this? And if you're not walking and knowing his voice, there's a whole lot of other voices that will want to be louder. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every voice that isn't your voice has to yield to your voice. They have to be quieted, and that becomes our filter. Everything, everything, everything. Nothing gets into my mind unless it comes through peace. Nothing gets into my mind unless it comes from hope. Nothing gets into my mind unless it comes from faith. I will not agree. This can be all of our, this can be all of our confession. I will not agree with anything. No words that don't come from you. No thoughts that don't come from you. No attitude that doesn't come from you. No decision will be made that you're not authoring. In Jesus' name. I love you guys. Have a great day today.